Let's talk about the game seven, that game that we all dream of having. Game seven, you go off. I mean, take control of that game. I mean, I don't know if there's ever been a game like that where. There hasn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every sense of the word. I mean, you controlled every aspect of the game. What was your mindset going in that game? What was it like? And did you have in your mind you were going to do that, or did it just happen? Well, you know, in game six, uh, Will Chamberlain, I think, got 37 points on us because Willis didn't play. Right. So I was just thankful that we had a game seven coming back to New York. But I was like one of the youngest guys on the team, so every game day, my biggest thing was what am I going to wear? You know, like a <laughs> wardrobe together. So when I woke up, that's what I'm thinking. And I remember Willis is injured, so I was calling around to, to find out if he was going to play. So I couldn't get any information. So that when I went to the game, I had no clue. Uh, Willis was in the locker room. He had been there since 10 a.m., you know, getting treatment. So we were all in there asking him, was he going to play? So Holtzman closed the door and said, whether he plays or not, we have to. So you guys got to get focused on the game. So when we left the locker room, we had no idea Willis would be playing or not. But everybody thought it was premeditated that the way he came on the court, we already knew. I was just as flabbergasted as everybody else when I saw him walk out. The crowd went crazy. But I'll never forget, I saw Chamberlain, I saw Baylor, I saw West. Three of the greatest players that ever played the game. They, they became mesmerized just standing there looking at Willis. And for some reason, that gave me so much confidence. I went, we got these guys. <laughs> and then oh, you wow, guys, the it? crowd, the oh. crowd, the crowd started cheering. And you guys never shut up. <laughs> just got bigger, and Willis would come out, he made his first shot, you know, then he made his second shot, I go, this guy's been holding out on us, there's nothing wrong with him, <laughs> so that kind of set the tempo right there. Did you think you were going to have that kind of game, I mean, you're just gassed, I mean, the defensive part, especially with the steals, I mean, you were just, you were just in a zone, I mean, just in, and were you ever in that kind of zone other than that time, or was that the highest level of zone you've been in? Well, ironically, whenever we leave the locker room, like we were playing Earl and Pearl, Holtzman would say, hey, Clyde, forget about offense. Just focus on defense against Earl. So this game, when we left, he told me, hey, Clyde, hit the open man. You know, but as the game progressed, I was the open man. Every time I came up with I had a shot. So, But my best buddy, my college teammate, was a guy who was devastating. You know, I was glad when they took him out of the game. A guy named Dick Gary, we played together in Southern Illinois. So uh, he still he still can't stand to watch a game seven. And it's, you know, and everybody always asking, why can you stop Frazier, man, in game seven? So he's pretty embarrassed. But other than that, <laughs> other than that, that was uh, unequivocally my greatest game. 